All right, good afternoon and thanks for joining us for the FSIP DC Golf Performance Motors webinar. Um, we are excited that we are finally able to offer these motors up for sale. I know most of you have been seeing us talking about them for quite some time now. Um, we have them and we will begin shipping the motors next week. I'm sorry, not next week, the following week of July 4th. Um, so that's pretty exciting for us. And this project really came about because the FSIP engineering team went out to look for um, a perfect motor to pair with our 1268 500 amp conversion kits. And when we were doing our testing, we weren't really pleased with the results that we were seeing from some of the more popular motors that are available out there. And so our FSIP engineers designed these motors to provide the optimum performance for either speed or torque. Now I know that there are some motors out there that are speed and torque motors, but we really decided um, we had seen the most requests from our customers for one or the other. And so for us, it made sense to make this as easy as possible when it came to ordering and selection. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that we were getting results that were going to be satisfactory for you and your customers when you were selling these motors. So all of the testing for these motors was done by FSIP engineers um, and some non-engineers like myself. I got to drive some golf carts with fast motors in them. And we used primarily stock vehicles um, when we did the baseline measurements. And so as we step through this and we start to talk about increases, we were using stock vehicles with the exception of the EasyGo. We did have the Freedom chip installed there, but we'll talk about that when we get there. All of our vehicles were using stock tires, stock gear ratios, so we didn't do anything wild and crazy there. Um, the other important thing to note, guys, is that your results will vary depending on your tire size, your gear ratio, and the health of your batteries. And that's something that's very important to remember. If your batteries are discharged or partially discharged, the controllers are not going to get what they need, and as such, the motor's not going to perform the way that it needs to as well. So keep that in mind when you're looking at results or perhaps you're getting feedback from your customers. You always want to make sure that their batteries are in good shape and that they're fully charged. The one thing I do want to mention here is that it is not required that you use the 1268 conversion kits from FSIP. All of our testing numbers are reflective of FSIP using that controller conversion kit as well as these motors. But there's no reason that any uh, four or 500 amp controller wouldn't work for you. This motor is not designed to be used with the stock controller in these vehicles. Um, so definitely recommend upgrading there. So that being said, let's look at some of the motor um, results that we were able to see when we did our testing. So on the EasyGo side, we've got two different systems that we need to look at, right? We've got the EasyGo PDS, uh, that's a 36-volt system, and we've got the TXT, which is a 48-volt system. Now, our research here showed that those were the two most popular ones out there that we needed to look at. And so we went with a fairly easy part numbering schematic here. You can see for the PDS speed motor, you're going to be looking at part number 221-36V speed EZ. That's pretty easy to remember, right? Um, the part number for the conversion kit that we paired that with is our 1268-5502 EKP. We did see 22 miles an hour when we installed the motor and controller combination. Now at the bottom you can see that we were using that stock vehicle, but we did have the Freedom chip installed, so we were already getting 19 miles an hour. That three a uh, mile per hour increase may not look that impressive, but keep in mind that one of those stock PDS vehicles without freedom is only going to average about 14 miles an hour. So that's a pretty significant increase when you're not working with the freedom chip. On the torque side, we did see a drop that's not totally uncommon when you talk about a speed motor. It's the functionality that you're getting and the way that the motor is wound there. So there was a drop when we talk about torque. So if you're looking for a cart that's going to have kind of both of those, that PDS vehicle is not the one for you. Also on the speed side, if we talk about the 48-volt TXT cart, again, we went with a kind of intuitive part number here. It's going to be 48V speed EY. 
Um, and you'll see later on that that 48 volt motor can be used by both EasyGo and Yamaha vehicles. The controller that we, or I'm sorry, the conversion kit that we paired that with is listed on the screen as well. And for that EasyGo TXT 48 volt vehicle, we did see 25 miles an hour. So on the speed side, that was a pretty significant increase. Again, only six miles an hour I'm showing up here, bearing in mind that we had the Freedom chip installed. If you're only seeing 15 miles an hour from that cart already, perhaps 14, that's a very significant increase in speed. And on the TXT side, we actually did see an increase in torque. 17% is decent. It's nothing to write home about and nothing like the numbers that you're seeing underneath there when we talk about the torque upgrades. So on the torque side, when we look at the 36-volt PDS system, again, intuitive part numbering, 36V, torque EZ, and the pairing with our 1268-5502 EKP kit, we saw 15 miles an hour. Um, which was not an increase, not a decrease really, but we saw a huge increase in torque. So we went from 600 foot-pounds of torque to 1330, which is a 121% increase in torque. So if you're looking to climb some hills, this is going to be a fantastic uh, conversion when you're doing both the controller and the motor package here. Now on the 48 volt TXT cart, again, when the system voltage is higher, your results are just going to be so much higher. Um, with the 48 volt V torque EY part number and the 1268 conversion kit, we didn't see an increase um, in speed there, but we saw a 155% increase in torque on that 48 volt system. So again, more voltage, it's easier to get more torque out of it. So we did see quite an increase there. So this is what we have available for motors on the EasyGo side. I know that there are other EasyGo carts out there, um, but again, our research showed that these were really the most popular. I'll be interested to hear from you guys if you're looking for something else um, on the EasyGo side. Let's take a look at some other options by other manufacturers. So for club car, that's a pretty easy one. We work primarily with the IQ and the Excel system here. These are your 1510, 1515 controls. Um, and the conversion kits that you're going to use there with the 1268 part number are going to be the 1268-5501CK or the 5501CKX. Obviously, the X is for Excel, or maybe not so obviously. And your motor part number for speed is going to be 48V Speed CC. So you've got a 48-volt system, you're looking for speed in your club car. Here we saw an 11-mile-an-hour increase to 25 miles an hour, which is pretty impressive. Um, and we actually did see a torque increase here as well of 10%. Our stock club car was doing 13 and a half miles an hour and was putting out 636 foot-pounds of torque. On the torque side, we did see, again, some pretty impressive results here. We were pleased to get 19 miles an hour, which was five miles an hour increase. And we also saw an increase of 135% in torque taking us from 636 foot-pounds all the way up to 1492. So that's also pretty good results for what we have available here. So on the club car side, when you're working with just 48 volt systems, that's a pretty easy conversion there. Now for Yamaha, oh, I missed my Yamaha slide, there we are. So for Yamaha, it's the same idea. We have a 48 volt system primarily for these Yamaha drives. We have one conversion kit available when you're talking about the controller package. So you're going to use the 1268-5501YK conversion kit with the 48 volt V, I'm sorry, 48 V speed EY part number for the motor. On this one for the speed, we saw 25 miles an hour and that's an increase of 11 miles an hour over the stock vehicle. Again, our G29 was doing 14 miles an hour with 600 foot-pounds of torque. And we did also see a small increase in torque on this one as well. The packages between the drive when you talk about gear differential um, and tire size is not that different between the, the Yamaha vehicle and the 48-volt easy-go and club car vehicles. So the results were fairly consistent there. On the torque side, the Yamaha motor is going to be your 48V torque EY, 
Again, paired with our 1268-5501YK, we saw 19 miles an hour, so you're still getting an increase in speed while you're getting an increase in torque. And on this one, we saw a 140% increase in torque. So that's pretty exciting for that Yamaha vehicle. We have found that that's the one that the bulk of our customers like to kind of trick out and soup up, and they think that that turns into a nice little hunting buggy. And so those results were very impressive for us. So when it comes to the major manufacturers, guys, those are the DC motors that FSIP now has available. Um, we are taking orders for them today. But there's some other things you need to consider. Um, you may want to look at the torque curve here. You know, this is going to help you get a good feel for at what RPM do you start to see the drop-offs um, and where are your foot pounds coming from. This is available on the motor cut sheet, which is on our website. I'm going to show you the link for that here in just a moment. But if you haven't visit, visited our website and checked out the motor page and the information that we have available there, I encourage you to do so. The other important thing to consider when you're looking at any conversion, if it's even just upgrading your controller or having your controller remanufactured, is that you should replace the solenoid. Now, in this case, we recommend that you upgrade your solenoid. Curtis Albright is our preferred upgrade contactor when it comes to golf carts. Uh, we think that they do a fantastic job of making sure that there is constant current provided when needed. So these are 400 amp contactors. We have a 36 volt version as well as a 48 volt version. And we definitely recommend, again, not just for an upgrade, but anytime you're replacing a control in your golf cart, you should be replacing the solenoid. So in this case, we're recommending an upgrade because you would be upgrading your controller as well as the motor. We also have a cool turf switch available, and I know everybody kind of tends to call these something different. It's also known as a turf switch. You can have the turf and street modes. Maybe you call it a high-low switch. We went with turf switch here. Um, and we have two different versions of this depending on which 1268 conversion kit you're purchasing. We do recommend that if you want to have this functionality, you purchase the conversion kit and the turf switch at the same time. There's a setting that we will program for you in the controller to allow this turf switch to work easily. So in the turf or the low mode, you're going to have a slower speed, but you'll have more torque. And in the street or high mode, you're going to have full speed, but a little less torque out of the vehicle. I've seen these used for people who are using them in their neighborhoods, but then also on the golf course. I've seen them used for people who want to kind of throttle back what their kids can do when they drive the golf cart. Um, so those are some of those uses. And again, depending on what you're using will depend on the part number you need. If you're using a PDS cart and you're using the 1268 EKP conversion kit, you're going to need the, the turf switch that's up here on the left-hand side of the screen, 76-1268 turf EKP. Any other 1268 conversion kit, you're going to use just the uh, plain 76-1268 turf part number for that upgrade and functionality. The other thing that we recommend is upgrading your cable sets. I think that by now you all know your stock golf cart is going to come with six gauge cable. That just talks about how fat the cable is, right? So when you're upgrading to a four gauge size, you're going to get a slightly bigger, bigger diameter on your cable. And what that does is allow the current to pass through the vehicle more easily. I try to think of a more classy way or technical way to say that, but I think that's the easiest way. You're going to get more current through the vehicle at all times, which means you're going to see increased performance because of the consistency in that current passing through. So we have four different kits available right now. Um, again, based on manufacturer, we have the EasyGo kit, which is the four gauge that's going to work for your PDS and your TXT carts. We have the Yamaha, which is going to work for your Yamaha drives. And then in the club cars, I know that in the IQ and the Excel system, there were two different battery setups. There was four 12-volt batteries or six 8-volt batteries. That's why you see those two different part numbers up there. And again, we tried to go with intuitive part numbering schematics. 
So you'll see for the club car, if you have 412 volt, your part number is CC4 by 12 dash 4G. I think that's intuitive. Um, so these are things that we always recommend. When it comes to resources, we want to make sure that you have what you need there as well. So there are several ways for you to get information or find information from FSIP about our performance motors, as well as our conversion kits and any of the accessories you're looking for. So the first thing is in our 2016 product overview. If you have not gotten a copy of that yet, please call into customer service. Please reach out to your territory representative and ask for a copy of that. There's a nice spread in there that shows the packages, just as I've shown you today, when it comes to pairing the right conversion kit with the appropriate motor, as well as the increases that you'll see. As I mentioned earlier in our call, there is a golf cart motor cut sheet available. That is also on our website, but our sales team or our customer service team would be happy to email that to you as well. And then lastly, our webpage. So I did say, if you haven't had a chance to visit fsip.biz slash motors, please do so. You'll have access to the same, not the same, but similar looking charts that we reviewed today as well as to download the performance motor cut sheet and to look at the accessories that are available. There's a link there on that web page to take you to the part numbers for all of those things. So that's everything that I have for you guys today. Um, I'm going to take a minute here and try and unmute you. I still struggle with doing that. For those of you who have been on previous webinars, you know that that's my weakness. So bear with me here just one minute and let me see what questions we have. But you are all unmuted now, so who has questions? Who wants to know more about these motors? Don't all ask at once. That'd be overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the purpose of uh, having the Freedom Chip in there? With it was uh, just the way our cart was set up, truth be told. Um, we know customers kind of run it both ways. We have seen some good results with that Freedom Chip installed and just our 1268 conversion kit. We saw quite an increase in speed, too. Um, so for us, truth be told, it was really just the way that the vehicle was set up from previous testing experience. So did it have the same results with the chip out, or did you do any tests that way? We did take the chip out and run it. We didn't do official tests that way, like draw bar tests that we did when, when we had the chip installed, but the performance was very similar in terms of what we were seeing on the torque and the speed sides. So we didn't think that we needed to publish the results both ways. Okay. Do your customers tend to have it or not have it? Um, you know, most do. Okay. Yeah, we've already got them installed, but. Uh, you know, if you don't have one, I wouldn't see any use of selling them a chip and a motor, or right. would that be what you would suggest? No, I wouldn't take the time to do both at that point. I think with the motor upgrade and the control, if you're switching into the conversion kit as well, I, I, there's no point to go freedom chip at that point. All right. No other so, questions. So let me ask you a question about the torque. Um, you know, you have, you know, obviously torque in a gasoline engine or a diesel or whatever. How is that rated different than an electric motor torque? So for us, when we're showing you these torque measurements, these were taken as draw bar tests. So essentially, 
the way that we did this, and I'm pulling up my engineering notes here on how we did this testing. Um, do, do, do. Gotcha. Okay. So here we were measuring the torque that the vehicle was pulling. Um, when you're looking at those results that I have in line on each of those charts, so if we look at, let me get my presentation over here. So if you're looking here at what we're measuring here is torque, that is what the vehicle was pulling when we talk about torque, so what the get up and go was essentially at that time. If we're looking at the torque curve, that is where we're looking at what the motor is giving to the control and essentially putting on the axle. So those two torque measurements are just a little bit different. Does that help answer your question? Yes. Are you, are you looking to share a screen on okay. the more? All right. What other questions can I answer? We've only got one person who's willing to speak up. I like it. All right. Well, there's nothing else. As I mentioned, these are available for purchase now. We do expect to begin shipping the week of 4th of July. Um, they are heavy. So if you order one, um, they're going to go FedEx or UPS ground. But any purchases larger than that would need to go on a small pallet just because of the weight of these motors. If you come up with any questions that you didn't have answered, please reach out to customer service or to your sales team member, and we would be more than happy to help you out. I am happy to answer any questions that you may have as well. I'm Morgan, um, so you can certainly call and ask for me, and I'd be happy to help you out. And uh, I appreciate the time that you guys take out every single time. I'm always amazed at how many people take the time out of their days to spend time with us and, and learn more about these new products. So thanks to you guys for being loyal customers and taking time out of your day. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.